<clears throat> so we are back with the random variables. And uh, as I said, uh, the set, uh, in, anytime you do an experiment, you get a, uh, a set of all outcomes, all possible outcomes. That's the whole set. Because of the nature of the experiment, the idea is that to express it abstractly, we don't want to deal with the details of the experiment. We rather translate all of them into a real axis and deal with numbers. That's the idea of random variables. So what is random? There's nothing random about this variable. What is random is, of course, the basic experiments, experimental outcomes. When you toss a coin, you have no idea what is going to happen. So of course, there are only two outcomes, head or tail. So if you map the tail to one and head to zero, that's what's the random variable maps onto this. So then how do you characterize the peculiar nature of uh, this uh, experiment? So that's why you pick an X, X somewhere and then ask uh, the question, uh, what the figure out the, uh, find out the experimental outcomes that has been mapped uh, below some number. So remember what I have done. I picked an X. So what we are asking is, what is the set of all outcomes which has been mapped before this number? So from this experiment, you, let's say there are, uh, uh, Psi 1 has been mapped here, and Psi J has been mapped here. So this will be simply Psi, psi 1, comma Psi J, the way I have. Right? So this is an event. So we can define the probability of any event, because that's what we defined. And uh, so that's the probability of this event. And that's what we call the distribution function. I went through the, prob uh, of course, this is being a probability. This is non-negative. And you can clearly see if I put x equal to minus infinity, this is 0. If I put x equal to plus infinity, that is 1. So these are the properties of the distribution function. And we also saw that if you pick up an, uh, an x1 here and an x2 here, in other words, x2 greater than x1, then the set of all outcomes which has been mapped before x2 is the set of all outcomes which were mapped before x1 and something. So in other words, uh, I, I went through this last time in detail. So we can see that the probability of x, uh, x less than x2, the set of all outcomes, is x less than x1 union with x being between x1 and x2. So this is the distribution function of fx2, x at x2. This is the distribution function at x1. And this is some, uh, the, remember these two are disjoint or mutually exclusive. So the probability is the sum of the probabilities. So this is the probability of x1 between x1 and x2. So we get, uh, we get uh, this uh, property, fx x2 is uh, greater than or equal to fx x1 if x2 is greater than x1. Notice I used inequality here, but equality here. And also we get another useful formula if you ever want what is the probability, the likelihood that the random variable uh, gets mapped between x1 and x2. So that's from here. This is this minus this. So we can write it in terms of the distribution function. And this is non-negative, right? So the distribution function has all these properties. It increases. It never decreases because of this property. And it lives between 0 and 1. So that's why it's called a distribution function. And I talked about uh, it being right continuous uh, last time. So there is no reason that it couldn't have a jump here. So it, it could also have jumps, but it has to go up, not down. And I discussed the significance of all this last time. And the derivative, if you have any function, you can uh, take its derivative. So the derivative of the distribution function I'm going to call using fxx. So derivative is fx x plus delta x minus fxx 
over delta x. Look, this quantity is non-negative. This is non-negative. So any density function is uh, non-negative. So the relation the other way is fx no fx not is integral. Uh, if this is the derivative, this is the integral fx x dx x from minus infinity to x naught. So you put x naught equal to plus infinity, you get one. So you get the area under this function is one. So that's why we call it a density function. All this we went through this last time. And so uh, you have a uh, colloquially you have a distribution function like this and a density function under that. I will plot it this way. A density function can go up and down. So if you ask what is the probability that x is between x1 and x2, so the probability of x being greater than x1 and less than or equal to x2 is we saw that it is fx of x2 minus fx of x1 in the previous page. But using this relation, we can also write this in terms of the density function as the area under the density function. That's this. So that's the significance of the density function. What's the significance? So let me just say that and then let me move on to. So if you have a density function, which is like this, and if you have another density function, which is like this, both are density functions. So let's say this is f y y. This is f x x, two random variables. You know that both of them have area one but if you if you look at this uh, probability of this is x1 this is x2 then the probability that <clears throat> well let's say this is also fxx it's easy it's just two different random variables so this is the area uh, probability that the random variable is greater than x1 and less than x2 <clears throat> in other words when you perform the experiment the corresponding outcomes the value Outcomes being in this range is this probability. Whereas here it is much smaller. So you know that for this random variable, it is more likely things would happen here because this density function peaks. So the density function gives us an idea about the likely values and so on. I think this is where we were last time. And maybe I talked about the conditional density function. So conditional distribution function, distribution function is probability of x less than or equal to x, this event, probability of this event. So if you, probability of the same event, if you condition it on some another event b, we can call it the distribution function given b. I showed you that all, it has got all the properties of the distribution function and it's a derivative is the de uh, conditional density function. So the derivative of uh, the distribution, conditional distribution function is the conditional density function. We will have a chance to talk about all this uh, in detail more. And in fact, I was supposed to show you, uh, let me do what I want to do, then I'll come back to the conditional stuff. So let me get to the main topic that I want, we want to talk today. Uh, functions of a random variable. Yeah? Can you ask whether they can hear me? So y equal to gx. Uh, so as I said, most of us being engineers, this is the problem we want to, a signal is coming in, we want to design a receiver to do something. The question is then what happens to the after the transformation. So what we are going to look at is, we can look at all sorts of functions, ax plus b, y equal to x cubed, uh, log x, e to the power minus x, sine x, cos x, etc. Or one, <laughs> one over one plus x squared, whatever. So, before I do that, if a density function is smooth and continuous, we call the random variable to be uh, continuous. So we, we study uh, if it is uh, a bunch of impulses, which, we, which is what we studied two weeks back, 
uh, we call it a discrete random variable. So this is a continuous uh, uh, probability density function. This is discrete. So if you toss a coin n times and you say the random variable represents the number of heads in n tosses, the probability that x equal to k is precisely will be a bunch of impulses. Probably, so that's an example of uh, that's n choose k, p to the power k, uh, p to the power k, q to the power n minus k, k equal to zero through n. So that's the example of a discrete random variable. This is binomial. And the example of a continuous random variable, the most important one is the Gaussian, right? Uh, so this curve is uh, one of some constant e to the power minus x minus mu the whole squared over two sigma squared. By this time, at least I gave you several examples last time. So what happens is the question is, if x is Gaussian, what is the density function of square of a Gaussian? Or what is the density function of a linear transformation of a Gaussian random variable? So, and this is exponential, one over lambda e raised to minus x over lambda. And, uh, and so on, this is gamma, and it has, uh, what is it? X to the power n minus one n fact gam n factorial and lambda to the power n e raised to minus x over lambda, etc. So you can uh, check and then we also looked at the Poisson as a discrete random variable. And then this is Maxwell. Uh, this is Cauchy, one over one plus x squared, one over pi. Etc. So we'll have a chance to study all this. So transformation means what happens if you square a random variable? What's the density function of the new random variable? So this is our problem. I have some distribution function fxx that's given to us. Corresponding density function also is given. We have this. And then we define a new random variable y equal to gx. We want to find out the distribution function of y and uh, this uh, density. I, I hope you, you looked at this video so I can go quickly. F y y. If you haven't looked at, you will be, you'll have a hard time solving the quiz today. You, you have to come prepared a little bit and uh, then I will reinforce this. Then you will be able to sort of do the problem. Well. Any questions on the? Why don't you ask them whether they have any questions? So let's, let me look at uh, some simple problems. So y, y equal to ax plus b. So remember, we will start with fyy. So y is by def, fyy is by definition probability of y less than or equal to y. That's by definition. But I'm going to bring in this relation for y. So we can write this as probability of ax plus b less than or equal to y. b is a constant, so I can take it here. So this is probability of ax less than or equal to y minus b. Of course, a, I can take it here, depending on whether a is positive or negative. So if a is positive, I can write this as y minus b over a. If a is positive, if A is zero, there is nothing to worry about. And if A is negative, the inequality goes the other way, right? If A is negative, this is uh, X is greater than Y minus B over A. But look at here, this is the distribution function of X. So we have F Y Y, it's two answers. This is the distribution function of X, Y minus B by A. The other one is one minus F X, Y minus B over A. Anyone, if you have questions, just stop me. Otherwise, I'll just go at this speed. So let's take the derivative there. So if you take the derivative, you get fyy of d by dy of fyy. So also has 
This is fx of y minus b over a because the derivative of capital F is small f. Then the with respect to remember the variable is y, not x. This x is just showing which random variable it refers to. See, a equal to zero, y is b. Look at the equation. a equal to zero, then y is b. y is just a constant. So there is nothing to, that's not a random variable anymore. If a equal to zero, uh, the x is gone out of the picture. You are saying y is a constant. So here, this will be one over a because the derivative of this. Here, it's going to be minus one over a fx of y minus b over a. This is a negative, this is a positive. But minus one over a is positive. So I can write this as in this way if you want. All right, so that's a formula that you should sort of be able to derive. So let me do an example here. Suppose x is Gaussian with the parameters mu and sigma squared. So fxx looks like this. This is given to us. Then y equal to ax plus b, you plug in into that previous formula. I'm just going to write the, uh, so this turned out to be one over a fx of y minus b over a, wherever x is. So this will uh, turn out to be square root of one over two pi a squared sigma squared e raised to minus x minus, what is it? I just substituted into uh, this, uh, this into this. So we can see that what happens is, uh, this is also, this is the same form. This is Gaussian form. So you can say this is Gaussian. Instead of the first parameter, I have a mu plus uh, b. And the second parameter is a squared sigma squared. So this is a theorem. If you do it, this is a linear transformation, right? Linear. So under linear transformation, a Gaussian stays as Gaussian, but of course with the different parameters. So, so if you want, you can write it like this. Some linear transformation, y equal to ax plus b. This is linear. Then Gaussian going in, it gives you Gaussian coming out. Remember, so Gaussian sometimes is written as normal. N, N is for normal, normal random variable. So this is also normal, but with parameter mu y and sigma y squared. Mu y is a, a mu plus uh, a b, and mu y squared is a squared sigma x squared, the original one. So Gaussian, linear Gaussian. So remember, I didn't make this up. I proved it for you in the previous one. So let's, have, let's see what, and let's do another example. What happens if you square a Gaussian? Or square any random variable? So, so we'll start with the, I'll go to the next page. So y equal to x squared. So you should also draw the graph. It will be useful. Y equal to. And so what we want is f y y. Remember, f y y is probability of y less than or equal to y. So y, you pick up some y. This is y is less than or equal to y. And then you can see what happens in x. If y is less than, so x must be between these two values. X must be here. That's where the graph is helpful. 
So you can write this, but this x1 is minus square root of y, x2 is plus square root of y. So you can say this is the, uh, y is the same as x squared less than or equal to y because y is given to be x squared. But x squared, this graph is y equal to x squared, right? So x squared less than or equal to the some small y is the same as saying that x is between this region. So I hope you can see that this is the same as x being greater than minus square root of y and less than plus square root of y. So this you need to figure out with the help of the graph. And so each problem is different. And so just knowing the formula is not going to help you. You need to solve different problems and get uh, used to it. So if you bring it to this stage, so here if you erroneously write this is the same as x less than or equal to square root of y, that's wrong. So, so that's why the graph will help you. See, y equal to x squared, that's this graph. So capital Y being less than or equal to small y is the same as x being here. You can physically see in the graph. Or you may say, look, I know this from here. That's also fine, whatever you want to. But this is now it's easy. This is the distribution. Remember, we had this formula before. This is random variable x square root of y minus fx minus square root of y. So if you take the derivative, you need d by dy of uh, this quantity. So I'm just going to do it. So derivative of capital F is small f square root of y. Then derivative of square root of y, which is one over two square root of y. And here minus derivative of capital F is small y minus square root of y. Derivative of this, that's minus one over square root of y. So minus minus becomes plus one over two square root of y. So I can write it together as one over square root of y, fy plus square root of y, plus fy minus square root of y. Hold on, y positive. Yeah, what is it? What? Yeah, yeah, you're right. Say, uh, thank you. This is x, this is x, this is x, this is. That's what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah, of course, the, uh, the unknown in terms of the known. There's no point in writing the unknown. And it was, you can see here, it's just my mistake here. Capital F, derivative, lowercase. Uh, those of you who are on the video, Zoom, just uh, either uh, through chat or otherwise, just talk to me if you have issues. So let's again go back to the X being Gaussian, but the first parameter zero, the second parameter one. In other words, FX6 is uh, like this. Remember, sigma squared is one. This is called, uh, what is it called? Uh, normalized Gaussian. The mu is zero, sigma squared is one. There's another name. I is it not standard normal? Yeah, standard normal, right. Yeah. Hmm? X can be a vector, but a vector will come later. We haven't dealt with, we are just dealing with one random variable now. Let's do one at a time. Then we do two random variables and more will come to vector. So remember the previous problem, y equal to x squared. So this is the problem. X is a, a standard normal, as he said, this is called a standard normal, right? So the question is, you square a standard normal, what is the density function of uh, Y? So we have the answer, I'm just going to plug it in from there. One over, what was it? One over two square root of Y. FX of, uh, uh, for X, you look at the previous sheet here. Fx of uh, plus y square root of y minus square root of y. So fx is here. So that is one over uh, square root of two pi e raised to minus. Instead of x, you put plus square root of y minus square root of y. So you'll get the same thing two times. Two, two cancels. So if you want, you can write this answer as, and I think it is some shape like this. So this is called chi squared chi squared with one degree of freedom. 
why one we will see later so this is another theorem if you have a standard gaussian and if you square it you get a chi squared random variable what is the pdf of chi squared it is here Any questions? Uh, what do you mean by degree of freedom? What was the question? Uh, can you speak louder? Uh, what do you mean by degree of freedom for chi-square uh, distribution? Yeah, this this quantity here one. Later you will see here. Chi squared with the two, two here, three here, n here, but you are not ready for that. I will. Uh, that's a uh, different problem. So let's understand the uh, these things. You don't have to memorize, but you should sort of uh, as good as you should know it. In other words, if you have a standard normal, if you square it, you get uh, this density function. It's called chi squared with one degree of freedom. So it's a natural question to ask: What is two degree, three degree? We will come to that. So uh, let's let me do some discrete problems. What if I give you the transformation uh, like this? Uh, hopefully you have seen this in the uh, videos, but I'll do this. I'll do these three problems for you. So everything y equal to x, y equal to x. So uh, I want to make a tiny announcement. I noticed that uh, while grading quiz three. We may, uh, the, some mis uh, mistakes were made, so we, I'm going to regrade it again. So I think uh, your grades are going to change, quiz three. And uh, but you let me know, and if you if you feel we I graded it differently, you can contact me later. And uh, so what is the problem here? So this is the problem. I have some uh, distribution function of x. This is given to you. And it has some density function of x. This is given to you, these two. I want the distribution function of y. And I want the density function of y. Uh, so I hope you understand the problem, right? And you, you are given these functions. And if you went through my notes, you don't need my help now because all these are solved there. I asked you to close the notes and solve it. Because there will be problems like this either today, I think. Right? So listen to me. Anyway, I'll do this quickly. So look at this problem. Anybody, what is this problem called? One. What is that function called? You should be familiar. What? Step function. What? Delta, did you say? Step function, right. It takes two values, plus a and minus a, or plus one and minus one. So look, x, x takes all sorts of values, but y only takes two values. This is like quantization, right? So you can say probability of y equal to one. Look at that graph. When will y be one? What is the condition on x? Anybody? Look at that graph. When will y be one? X, x is greater, greater than, than zero. Zero, right. So this is the same as probability of x greater than zero. That's one minus fx of zero. And when will y be minus one? Look at the graph again. When x is uh, less than or equal to zero, but that's by function distribution function of x at zero. So this is easy. This has got uh, two impulses. So that's like a coin tossing problem. So this is the uh, probability of y equal to k. Y only takes minus one and plus one. So that's the density function of x. If you want the distribution function, it will look like this, right? Because if you integrate this. Any questions? Yeah, any questions? Why don't you ask them, anybody has any questions? So let me look at the next problem. <laughs> Uh, 
I'm mixing up y and x. So y equal to gx. Let's say this is a, this is minus c. So if I give you a graph, first you, uh, your first job is to convert that into an equation. So let's write y. Uh, so anybody, what is this line? Anyone? What is the equation of that line? Anyone? X plus a. X plus a. Is it? Uh, uh, for, uh, for what? Y, uh, what is it? Uh, when x is positive, right? When x is greater than a, I guess. <laughs> no, look here. Oh, when yeah. x is positive, y is x plus a, isn't it? Mm -hmm. then, what is the value of y when x is zero? Look at the graph. A. What? When x is and zero, what's the, from the graph, what's the value of... Uh, of course, it is a, right? And uh, when x is beyond, it should be uh, greater than a. So uh, x plus a is the right answer. And here, when x is greater than zero, what about y? Y is what? What's the, what is the condition on y? Anyone? Greater than a. So just keep in mind, that's all. Right? And so the, we see that this is, of course, if this is x plus a, this is x minus a, when x is negative, right? When x is negative, y is less than minus a. Because put x equal to 0, you get y is less than minus a. So that much you figure out first, even if the graph is just given. So remember, we are trying to do for y. So y, something is happening, y less than minus a. Something, so, so minus a is here, plus a is here. So we'll start from here. Let's say we'll start with y less than minus a. Let's see what, let's see what happens. So f y y, that's what we, we try to find the distribution function always. That turns out to be more physical. That is probability of y less than or equal to small y by definition. But look at here now. If y is less than minus a, this is the relation between x and y. This only comes by practice. So that's why you should solve these problems. So this y is given by this. So x minus a less than or equal to y. The, I, I take this a here, so I can write this as probability of x less than or equal to y plus a. That's fx of y plus a. That's for y less than minus a. So for y less than minus a, I found out fyy to be fx of y plus a. So let's do for y greater than a. Why am I missing the thing in between? Because that's what is clear, right? Then we will see how to... This is given to us, this is very clear. So when y is greater than a, I can use this relation. So fyy, which is probability of y less than or equal to y. But look at uh, capital Y, I mean, look at y. Y, the relation is x plus a. So this is... Uh, I'm going to put here x plus a, then you take the a to the other side. So this is less y, uh, x less than or equal to y minus a, but that is by definition fx of y minus a. So let's see, so you may ask what happens between minus a and minus b. So let's see. So you just have to do uh, everything and see with things. So you, this is what we start with. This is given to us. The distribution function of x is given to us. And uh, this is good for y less than minus a. So minus a is here. And this is uh, for y greater than a. So a is here. So this, uh, so what, let's go to the, so what will be the graph here? Let's see. So if you go here, uh, it seems it is uh, fx of y plus a. To figure out what this is, the extreme value is minus a. So if you put y equal to minus a, this becomes fx of zero. fx of zero is here. That means I hope you see that this will come and sit here. Or this whole portion. This whole portion, this whole portion comes and sits here. Right? 
now what <clears throat> so, so uh, can you please repeat it once again the drawing part of the graph what was the question can you please uh, repeat that thing like why why the graph shifts like that <clears throat> so let me graph it here this is given to us this graph and we want to draw f y y and remember i'll copy the expression here f y y is f x of uh, y minus a from your, for a pa, y greater than a and f x of y plus a for y less than minus a so let's take the bottom portion it is here minus a plus a so we want to figure out what this graph is this graph is given to us so if you put y equal to minus a which is here look at here this become minus a plus a this is zero so fx zero is here so i hope you see that I'll, this graph will come and sit here because then if you put y equal to minus 2a this will be uh, fx of minus a which is this graph so i hope you see that this graph will come and sit here right this graph comes and sits here now let's go to the other side when y is greater than a in other words when it is this region it's given by this graph so put y equal to a y equal to a this becomes fx of 0 put y equal to 2a this becomes fx of a which is here so i hope you see that this graph will come and sit uh, here so i'll put uh, this piece of the graph will sit uh, here uh, fr starting from here so that blob is here then it is going to be like this with all this so this side comes and sits here this side comes and sits here but if you look at this value this is fx0 this is fx0 now look at the properties of a distribution function it cannot go down so this function has to join yeah that's the same height so that's the distribution function of f y y so it's a derivative will be the density function derivative of a constant is zero so f y y is easy to write so between this and this what will be the value of the derivative uh, density function anybody zero here and whatever is the derivative here and whatever is the derivative here of uh, this function in other words uh, let me so i'll redraw that more dramatically here so this is fxx let's say this is fxx so from what we said i'm not going to explain anything this point will come and sit here and this black curve will sit here and the blue curve will sit here same thing here if this is the black curve that black curve is going to come and sit here this black curve, because the derivative of that portion then it is zero then afterwards uh, whatever is that curve will sit there i hope it is clear to you all again this is there on the video but uh, i just read it this so if you want a homework why don't you do this problem so let's say this is a this is 2a this is minus a this is minus 2a this is y index okay let me do the other problem A any questions yeah hmm? uh professor for for the uh, big f y y uh, shouldn't you connect the two dots like between uh, in the middle somebody can i couldn't hear what what was it say it again uh for the big f y y uh 
do you need to connect the two dots in the middle, like uh, for the uh, function? Oh, you mean this one? Yeah, yeah, yes. Oh, yeah, 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 yes, thank you. <clears throat> yes, so I did it different color so you can see how things come up. Now I gave you a home, this is a different problem, the last one, I want you to go home. Uh, so there, uh, here you have saturation. So now you are in a position to do quantizer yourself. So quantizer is like this. If you have a signal coming, let's say this is some signal, S of T. I want to quantize it. So this is a good quantizer. So usually what did you look at here? Signals may have mostly So if you have a signal like this, this is a signal. If you want to quantize, one thing you notice is that this signal has a lot of small values and once in a while big values. So we may use a quantizer like this. You can also make the step size. So now this is your problem going home, finding out the density function. So. This is a signal. Let's say this signal has some distribution function like this. Call it x of t, fx x. So what I'm doing here is I want to convert the x values into a, a bunch of steps. So if the, what is it? If the step is between zero to delta one, I have some value. What delta two, uh, if it is too small, we may close it zero. If delta to two delta, we put this value, whatever it, or let's say this is epsilon, two epsilon. So this is delta, etc. And after some time, we just quantize it to five or five delta, etc. So this may be a 10 step quantizer. So probability of y equal to zero is whenever x, probability of y equal to zero is probability that x is between here, x is between greater than zero and less than epsilon. So that will be fx of epsilon minus fx of zero, etc. So ultimately, y would look like this. This would be the. So I want you to go home and do this rather than I do everything. So this is a 10 step quantizer. So again, the, you understand the rational. Sometimes you may not make this uh, 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 x-axis or uh, the same. But you may make this step size, step width larger or smaller. So the argument being that the lower values you want to quantize finer, et cetera, et cetera. So there are, you can study this in, so what should be the optimum step size if I know that this has got a Gaussian distribution or et cetera, et cetera, okay. What was that? What was the message? What is the problem? So if you see, remember, uh, let me call this to be x1, x2, xn, x and x of minus one. So probability of, uh, probability of y equal to zero is probability of x being greater than zero and less than or equal to x1. Or let's say I go from here uh, between um, uh, say minus x, uh, minus, x of minus one. So this is fx of x1 minus fx of x, x minus one. Then probability of y equal to delta is the next one. Probability of x between x1 and less than or equal to x2. So this is fx of x2 minus fx of x1, et cetera. So you get the idea. So for fyy look, will look like this. So this is probability of y equal to zero. 
this is probability of y equal to delta x etc and uh, if you are given the density function of x you can physically see that this probability is this area this probability so this is p whatever if i call this p0 this is p0 this is p1 this is p2 because this is 0 x1 x2 x3 etc so the question is the free variables are where should you pick this x1 x2 etc this is a quantization problem so one one criteria you may say that i want to make the output uniform i want to make all this equal height so then you the uh, of course you know the, so let's say you have a 10 10 step quantizer so each each value should be what anybody if i have 10 step at the output what should be each value if it is uniform 0 0.1 right 1 over 10 so then the argument is you start with this density function of x it's like this uh, you uh, find out the last one x of minus n or minus 10 you take this area this should be one tenth of area then to find out x of minus 9 you come and take this should be one tenth etc so you can you can figure out these values where you should put the quantizer etc so x1 x2 so you come from the left you can do it so this is the way if you want the output to be uniform but if you say you want some other distribution you can go that way So let me let's do look at the same problem y equal to gx except the function is continuous. Nice. Did I finish all the other thing or we have one more to do there? Did I do the third one or no? I didn't. So okay. So let's do the third one. What was it? Uh, was it this? All right, so why is this x is here so let's write down the equation quickly anybody what is the equation of this let's say this is a this is minus a what's the equation of this line this is x minus a this is x plus a see somebody said it so quickly and if you if you if you stuck get stuck here then that's a problem so this is x minus a for what when x is greater than a that's the same as saying that y is positive. Like, look at here. Yeah. And this is x plus a when x is less than minus a. That's the same as saying y is negative. And what happens when y is 0? y also takes the value 0 when x is? All right, so you have to translate the whole graph into the paper. So now I'm going to start with y less than zero. I'm going to come from the left. So the what distribution function of y. Y or minus a. Anyone? What what happened with uh, when x equals equals to a or minus a? What does this do? All right, so you put equality somewhere depending on how it is defined. Remember, it is up to me. So I'm going to define uh, here. I mean, it depends on the problem. Let's say I give you equality need to be there, of course. This is y less than zero. So y less than zero. But y is less than or equal to y. But y is given to be x plus a less than or equal to y. So this is probability of x less than or equal to y minus a. That's fx of y minus a. That's for y negative. And for y positive, probability of <coughs> y is what? x minus a less than or equal to y. So that's the same as probability of x less than or equal to y plus a, or is fx of y plus a for y positive. And from here, you can see that uh, probability of y equal to 0 is 
when our x is between minus a and plus a. So that's fx of a minus fx of minus a. So I'm going to put all this in a graph in the next one. Yes, of course, it matters. If it has to be equal with the problem, it's not up to you. So I, I put it in equality at the minus, wherever I put it. But if somebody gives you a problem with equality at the other end, you have to solve that problem. It will be, if it is a well-defined problem, it will be uh, in the problem. All right, so let's put it all this together. So we have fxx here and fyy under that I'll draw. So from the equation, when y is less than zero, it's uh, this equation. So put y equal to zero if it fx of minus a. So when y is less than zero here, it's fx of minus a, fx of minus a is here, fx is minus a is here. So this graph comes and sits here. So this graph comes and sits here. And when y is, uh, look, at the, look at your equation again. When y is positive, it's this, uh, it's this line, uh, fx of y plus a. So put y equal to zero, you get fx of a, which is here. fx of a is somewhere here. So this graph comes and sits for the positive side of y. So that will come and sit here. And you have a jump here. Of course, this jump is exactly a probability of y equal to zero, which is fx of a minus fx of minus a. fx of a is here, fx of minus a is here. So this distance, is exactly this distance. So everything checks. So it's a derivative will be whatever here, some other derivative and an impulse here. That's f y y. So this impulse is this uh, this difference of height. So probability of y equal to zero is the area under the density function of x from where to where? Anybody? Because this is fx of a minus fx of minus a. Okay, so problems like this, you are supposed to do the homework before you came today. So if you have done it, the, home, the quiz should be ready. This is an important class, so I'll retest you again on this next week also. Any questions? Yeah. So again, the inequality is not up to you. I forgot to put it, the, the initial problem will give you where the inequality is. Or maybe from the context, it may be clear. Of course, you can put the inequality, if you put the inequality where you like, then it becomes a different problem, that's all. right. In other words, if one person puts the inequality at one place and the other person somewhere else, it's not the same problem, right? You're solving two different problems, that's all. <clears throat> so what is this? Sometimes what happens is you get uh, problems like this, y equal to x squared, y is sine x, y is uh, e raised to minus x, or y is x over, one plus x, etc. Oh, one minus x. 
these are all continuous functions and we can develop a formula which is what i want to do <clears throat> anybody what does this area represent anyone Anyone? That small area. What does it represent? The probability of x falls between x zero and x zero plus yeah delta x. That will be. How do you express if delta x is very small? How do you uh, how do you express this probability? Anybody? If delta x is very small, zero. No, no, of course not zero. It's, it, does it look like zero to you? It's a, it's a small area. How does it? How do you write it in terms of the density function? Integration. F x of what? F of of? Okay, very good. Multiplied by? No. Delta x. Delta x. Okay. So let's remember this formula. If delta x is very small. Instead of integrating, you can write it approximately like this. So I'm going to use this. That's the reason I said. So let's look at this problem. Let's say y equal to gx. I, what I want to find out is f y y. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, remember y is on this axis. So I'm going to uh, draw a small y here, and I'm going to ask this problem: for what is the probability that y is between y and y plus delta y? Y is here. I'm going to draw y plus delta y is just above that. This is y plus delta y. So I'm going to draw another line there. So my question is, what is the probability that y is in that small region? So what did you say here? This one we can write it as what? F y y multiplied by delta y. That much is true. Remember, we are trying to find out this function. <clears throat> But look, let's let's translate that ambiguity into the x-axis. Look here. When y is here, where will be x? So it depends on this graph. When y is So this value, there are three roots. I'm going to call them x1, x2, x3. When y goes to y plus delta y, there the, these are the corresponding points. I'm going to call it x1 plus delta x1. Here it is, x2 plus delta x2, and here it is x3 plus delta x3. So look, the argument goes like here. Yeah. So you just call delta x two could be positive or negative, depending on the graph, right? It could be on this side or that side. I respected the graph there. So look here, when y is in this region, that's what we want to find out. X could be where? X could be here or here or here. You have no idea. That's the whole point of multiple roots, right? So we could say that this is the same as. X could be between x1 and uh, x1 plus delta x1, or x could be between x2 and uh, x2 plus delta x2. Delta x2 could be negative, etc., etc. Depending on the roots, x could be between xn and uh, less than or equal to xn plus delta xn. But you can see this x1, x2, x3. These are all mutually exclusive. So this is the sum of the probabilities: probability of x greater than x i less than or equal to x i plus delta x i. I equal to one through n. Again, we used the mutually exclusiveness. Any questions? So look at the logic. Why the unknown? If it is unknown, is here x could be anywhere here, or any one of those places. But again, according to you, how do you rewrite this probability as anyone? That is what f x of alpha. 
probability of fx of xi multiplied by delta xi but delta xi as you said could be positive or negative so we would say all that matters is the actual value okay so look i'm going to equate this to the first line and last line i'm going to write rewrite in the next page so we get fyy multiplied by delta y is summation fx of xi multiplied by delta xi i equal to 1 through n there could be multiple roots so i am going to bring in the delta y on the other side and write this as summation delta xi over delta y delta y is always positive so i can write it like this fx of xi but now delta allow let me make delta y smaller and smaller then delta x will become smaller and smaller so what happens in the limit that becomes derivative dy 1 over the dy by dx so i can rewrite this as summation i equal to 1 through n 1 over dy by dx absolute value evaluated at x equal to xi or multiplied by this so this is the formula we are looking for so i'm going to solve uh, some problems so you should follow this recipe i mean obviously it is there we the steps that we went through it's most of you still don't draw the graph so draw the graph first number 1 in the problem find the roots then find the dy by dx take its absolute value solve it at xi then the last step is substitute into the into this equation all this so four steps See, this is the advantage. Uh, this is uh, uh, dy by dx is g prime x uh, xi multiplied by is that clear? Clear to you? So this is uh, uh, dy by dx at x equal to xi. So either way is fine. So look at this problem I am doing an example a stick is broken at random so I break it somewhere here find the this is the problem find the pdf of the ra of their ratio so how do you how do you proceed this when you when you break a stick at random how many pieces do you get two so what do you random means what what does random mean breaking random one piece is this whole stick is of length of one so when you break this uh, you get two pieces so how do you characterize them anybody if it is random we be, let's call one of length what we don't know the length right because it's random so what do you want to call it x so the other one will be 1 minus x so the ratio will be x to 1 by x and what is uh, i didn't tell you about anything about x what can you assume here x to be anybody x is broken at random and the whole length is 1 so x is what so if you want to associate x with any random variable we have discussed so far what's a good match everybody agrees right 
So what the class is saying that X is uniform between zero and one. In other words, the problem is like this. So you see a lot of it went on into this formulation. A, a stick is broken at random. What is the PDF of the ratio? That's all it, it, the, the problem is. But the rest is you have to sort of come up with the imagination and all that. So we make reasonable assumptions as we move on. <clears throat> You see, this is a, a function. If you want, you can plot it. So I'll do this two ways. So let's follow. Uh, since I told you the steps, I don't want to violate the steps here. I gave you four steps. I'm going to follow that. Right? So draw the graph. Uh, let me qualify that with this. Uh, draw the graph of yx and fxx. This is very important. You need to draw both the graphs and you will see why. So I'm going to, step one is I want to draw both the graphs. So this is the graph of uh, x equal to fxx. And now y is uh, x over one minus x. So let's draw this. So what's the, how, how will this graph look like? Anybody? What's the value of this graph at x equal to zero? Huh? And uh, at uh, one, when x is one, infinity, when x is half, one, right? So I hope you see that the graph goes like this. What's the value of this at uh, two? x equal to two. Hmm? Minus two, right? So how will the graph look like? Anybody beyond x? So it will be, you should go home and uh, what is the value at x equal to uh, plus infinity? What? Is is minus one. How you divide by x, one over one, right? Minus one, right? So that will be like this. All right, so that's it. all I did was step one. Now look at this problem. Y is X over one minus X. All we are interested in is here. X goes between zero and one. As X goes between zero and one, what is the range on Y? Anybody? So let me, let me modify my graphs. So you need to find the, I will put it as a, a two here. Find the range of Y. It's understood, but let me write it like this. Then this will be three, four, five. Three is, uh, the next step is finding the roots. What did you say, y goes between? Zero and? So this is step one, we did step one. So let me pick up a y between zero and one. So I picked up y here. Where is the root? See, once you graph the, have the graph, it's easy. The root is here, I only see one root. So let's solve for the root. Y is fixed, so Y is Y multiplied by one minus X is X. So what do you get? Uh, you have to solve for X1. So X1 is uh, Y over one plus Y, right? Yes? Now we can do dx by dy. I'm going to do dx1 by dy. That's also fine. As Then I can use this formula. Either way is good. I gave you the formula. So we can use this formula. Dx, dxi by dy. So dx1 by dy. What is it? V derivative with respect to y u minus u the derivative of the lower minus one plus y the whole square. So y, y cancels one over one plus y the whole square. So this is step number two, I found the roots. Step number three, and finally I'm ready to substitute into the density function. So the last one is use the formula. There's only one root dx1 by dy multiplied by fx of x1. dx1 by dy is here, one plus y the whole square 
fx x1 look at here x1 here if i go it upstairs that value is 1 multiplied by 1 so y between 0 and infinity that's the answer so this is a good example it's uh, i usually ask in the i can ask you a variation of this in the in the quiz so let me give you a couple of variations of this problem for you to do at home how do you know this answer is right so let's see let's check whether remember y is positive so this should be what area under the density function should be 1 so let's integrate this 0 to infinity 1 over 1 plus y the whole squared i'm going to put 1 plus y to be u so this is 1 over u squared when y is 0 u is 1 to infinity u squared d, d, d y is du so the derivative is what minus 1 over u 1 to infinity is 1 so it everything checks the class has any issues those of you sitting at home you should try to come to the class it's a much easier here and this classroom is a big room. Also, uh, I'll give you an announcement. I'll send you an email. I'm going to, after halfway through the class, I'm going to randomly pick students and do an interview because a lot of you are doing 10 out of 10 and I want to make sure that you the you know what you are doing there's no nothing else is going on in this uh, during the exam but i will let you know so let's do a couple more examples let's say y equal to x squared so i draw the graph i'm going to do this quickly what am i supposed to do yeah find the range as x goes between minus infinity to plus infinity what is the range on y All right, so I, I figured out this. This is part of this is number two. Then pick a y, find the roots. I see that there are two roots here x1 and x2. So x2 is square root of y, x1 is minus square root of y. So I can do dy by dx next step. That is 2x absolute value. So absolute value. So that's going to be 2 square root of y. So the last step is fyy is 1 over the derivative fx at uh, x1 that is uh, minus square root of y plus fx at uh, x2 so it's the same same what we got before we had remember i did this in a different way any questions so let me give you some, the stick, this is for go, uh, homework or go home and practice this. So the same problem, stick problem, y is 1 minus x, but uh, x is uniform from 0 to 2. See, this problem, now it gets uh, difficult uh, or a little complicated because you have to take this uh, problem. x now goes up to here, so you have to, this will, you have to bring in this one. And another problem is, uh, so this is at home, y is uh, x over 1 minus x, the whole square. Try this. And x is again uniform from, let's say, minus 1 to 1, or 0 to minus 2. And uh, the third one is the uh, same problem. All right, so I'm going to leave it to you to do, so I can easily make variations. You need to sort of practice it at home. I don't know the answer, but you do it or I do it, it's the same thing, right? So remember, it's, uh, uh, that's what I said, each problem is different, you need to do it. So you go through those four steps, find the, Find the range of y in this. So once you plot it, you will see that as x goes between 0 to 2, what's the variation on y? In this case, y may take negative values. 
And remember, and x is 2, look at here. When x is 2, 2 over 1 minus 4, that is 2 over minus 3. So it takes negative values. So please do these three at home. One was a physical problem, the other one was sort of made up maybe a different ones. Let me do a few more problems. Anything else? Any questions? Why don't you ask them? You can, but the remember the calculator is not going to solve you a problem with all sorts of uh, anything is fine. But uh, if they do it themselves, it's uh, you can uh, easy to understand. Right? So let me do a few more uh, standard problems. Uh, so let's say y is uh, sine x. Uh, so first of all, fxx is uh, a, a straight line between 0 to pi. Anybody, what is the value of this constant? I left it, uh, you can do it mentally. Uh, what's the value of that constant? What should it be? Anyone? A density function is a, a straight line. You can't figure out the constant? How do you figure out the constant? Huh? There's no question. There's a K here. What should be this K? K is, uh, remember the density function is, oh, density function is fxx equal to kx. What is the value of K? Anyone? Is it 2 by pi? What is it? Is it 2 by pi? 2 by what? 2 by pi. Yes. How did you get it? So the area should be 1, right? The total area should be 1. And the area of triangle should be half into base into height. So I hope it should be... heard whatever he was saying. Right? <laughs> All right. So I'm going to draw the graph. Generally, you draw it below it. So you'll see y equal to sine. So I'm going through the steps. Draw the graph first. So sine x goes like what? Sine pi is like this, right? Of course it goes like this. So what is the range on y? Anybody? As x goes from 0 to pi, y goes from where to where? So we notice that this is part of one. I drew the graph. I find out the range. Next is the uh, solution. So I take a y here. How many solutions are there? Roots. I'm going to call it x1 and x2. Of course, if I draw this, there are other solutions. But you know, all it matters is here, right? So there are two solutions. x1 is what? How do you find out x1 in terms of y? Sine, how about x2? Pi minus? Very good. And so I go to the next step. dy by dx is what? What's the derivative of sine x? Cos x? Yes? 1 minus y squared. So I'm ready for the last step. Fyy. 1 over dy by dx. Uh, there are two roots. So, there will be, so fx of x1 plus 1 over dy by dx at fx of x2. And uh, you, you can see the derivative is the same at both the roots. So this is 1 over square root of 1 minus y squared. And uh, the fx of x1 is from here. What did he say? 2 over pi multiplied by x1 and the other one is 2 over pi multiplied by pi minus x1. 
So in this case, X1 happens to cancel, pi pi cancels. And uh, you get, uh, what do you get? Pi goes between? All right, so that's the answer. So please practice out uh, these problems. So let me give you another problem. So y is tan x and x is let's say uniform between 0 to pi by 2. So I hope you see the problem. Y is tan x, x is uniform. And what's the density function of y? So I already drew fxx. I'm going to do step one. I'm going to draw tan x. Anybody, how does tan x go? What is tan zero? Like this, right? So we are only interested here. So as x goes from 0 to pi by 2, what's the range on y? Look at the graph. Y goes from? Look at here. As x goes from, this is why if you draw the two of them, it's useful. As x goes here, y goes here. Zero, as he said, 0 to infinity. He is right. So you pick up any y here and find the root. How many roots are there? Yeah. Of course, there are infinite roots, but in this region that you are interested, there is only one root. You are right, x1. So x1 is tan inverse y. So y is tan x. What is dy by dx? I'm going to the last one. dy by dx is? What's the derivative of tan x? One over. x, which is what? One plus? One plus what? Tan squared x, right? Tan x squared. But tan x is y. So the derivative, so the whole idea is always you want to rewrite the derivative in terms of y. That's why I went through all that. So we are ready for the last step. We got everything. Fyy, there's only one root and the derivative one over dy by dx, that's this, multiplied by fx at x1. But this is, uh, this is what? This is the value here. That's a constant. That's a two over pi, right? So that's a, this is two over pi. So the answer is two over pi divided by one plus y squared. Y between zero and uh, infinity. Now I should, I actually wanted to give you a different problem, but it's exactly the same problem. Let me make, uh, y x from minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. So the problem I'm going to change slightly differently. This is the problem usually people. So x is uniform from minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. I'm going to leave it up to you to show that it's exactly you go through this you will get this. And this is Cauchy because in now in this case, y remember when you draw y will be like this. So y goes from minus infinity to plus infinity, and the density function looks like this. This is not Gaussian. This is Cauchy. What's the difference? The difference is that this only decays as a quadratic decay. So this is called a fat tail. Fat. F-A-T. Why fast? Because exponential decay is very, very fast. Uh, the Gaussian tail is goes so slowly. And we'll see the implications later. So if you draw the uh, Gaussian on top of it, it will go like this. 
so the tail goes dramatically down very fast whereas cauchy it comes so uh, so this is gaussian any questions any questions why don't you type in ask them any question So we give you a few problems for you to work at home. So this is for you at home. So let's uh, do this example. Y is one over x, but x is Cauchy. So f x x is like this. So instead of one, if you put alpha, that's called the Cauchy with the parameter alpha. What we previously had was Cauchy with one. So let's do this problem. Minus pi and pi, yeah. Okay, so. So anybody, how do you do this? So let's draw the density function that goes like this. X is given to us. Then we draw this function, Y equal to X. How does that go? Anyone? How does this go? y equal to 1 over x is what? Hyperbola, right? So it goes like what? Right. But the, is that the whole function? You have this also. So what's the range? As x, look at the, x is Cauchy. So its range is from where to where? Remember, nobody tells you the range, but it's given to you. The density function of x goes from? minus infinity plus infinity. So how about y? Yes. Y goes from? Look at the graph. If It's already here. As x goes from minus infinity to plus infinity, look at the graph. That's why I drew the graph. Y goes from where to where? Zero, look, remember zero, you don't have to worry because when x is zero, y is infinity, y is zero, x is infinity. So see, including zero, it also, y goes from minus infinity to plus infinity. Remember, this is part of your uh, number one or number two. Number three is how many roots are there? Look at this, when I take a x, how many roots are there? What is the root? x1 is what? One over? If y is given, of course, 1 over y. Right? Yeah, what is it? You raise your hand. So y is 1 over x. So what is dy by dx? Anybody? But 1 over x is, uh, so it's absolute value is absolute value of this. This is, what is it? All right, so we have, because 1 over x is y, 
So we are ready. dy by dx is there is only one solution, one over dy by dx multiplied by fx evaluated at x1. So that's one over y squared, one over pi divided by one plus x1 squared. But x1 squared is from here. X1 is one over y. So this is uh, one over y squared, one over pi, one plus one over y squared. So this is one, o one over pi, not one over actually, it was alpha squared, right? Alpha squared. This is, is an alpha. Let's do the problem I gave you earlier. So if I take the y squared inside, you see this, I can write it as So y squared, uh, y squared, uh, alpha squared plus one. I pull out the alpha squared also. And so alpha, alpha can't, there's an alpha here. This becomes one over alpha. So if you want, you can write this as beta over pi over beta squared plus y squared, where beta is one over alpha. So this is also, what is the form of this density function? Anybody? What is the density function? Also Cauchy, because look at this is Cauchy. This is Cauchy. This looks like exactly the same, except instead of alpha, you have one over alpha. So you have a theorem. Inverse of a Cauchy is Cauchy with parameter fixed to alpha to one over So, so what is the theorem? If X is Cauchy with parameter alpha and Y is one over X, that's Cauchy also with parameter one over alpha. That's what we just proved. So if X is normal with parameter mu sigma squared and Y is AX plus B linear, then Y is also normal with the two parameters. I gave you the parameters before. So these are similar results. Inverse of Cauchy is Cauchy. Linear transformation of Gaussian is Gaussian. Inverse of Gaussian is not Gaussian because he can, so the parameter he has is a mu plus b. Here is a squared. So this is what we just did. We are given a density function. I give you a function, how to find the density function of Y. So you please practice. Uh, so this is, there are three or, four, three or four important themes in probability in the first uh, half of the class. This is one theme, transformation of one random medium. So if someone gives you a function and the density function of X, you should be able to find the density function of Y. And uh, if you cannot do it, you cannot do it. If you, so to do it, uh, you need to, so I'm going to move on from here. So you need to practice all these problems. So sometimes the problem may be in the sense of a uh, language, right, as I said. A stick is broken at random, what's the ratio of the PDF? Sometimes it may say a signal is quantized into 10 steps. See, a, uh, we already did that. And we want to quantize the lower values finer, or you say uh, quantize it in such a way that the output looks uniform, discrete uniform. So you know how to solve it. Or you say the output should have uh, more, more values at uh, 
lower small values of y and high values of y, some criteria. Right? So it's always transformation of x to y. So the quantization problem is well known. If you say the x is Gaussian and give me an output which is uniform and the five steps. So this is the problem. You can try to do it at home. X is standard Gaussian. So this is square root of one over two pi e raised to minus x squared by two. This graph, okay, this is. The question is, I want the out, this is fxx. I want probability of y equal to k look like this. So if there are five, But I want all these probabilities to be equal. So remember, this is the uh, this value is the probability that x is less than or equal to x1. So x1 is somewhere here. So we, we want this probability to be 1, 5. So we can solve this. Then you solve x2 so that this area is 1, 5. 1, 5 plus 1, 5 plus, then this area is 1, 5. 1, 5. So this is a five step condenser. So you, you should be, if it is Gaussian, you should be able to, this is able to get all this uh, x1, x3, x3, x4, x5. This is a six step, I guess, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six step condenser. Uh, so there will be some value of y, some value of y, etc. right? Two, three, four, five, six. If it is a five, if it is a five step, I'm sorry. If it is a five step condenser, you only need to find out up to x four. Either way, if, since I wrote one five, this is a five step condenser, so there is no. Uh, oh yeah, there is a fifth. Uh, so this is. I'm sorry. This is not x one. This is some value of y. Whatever is this value of y corresponding to, so you may say this is y equal to some minus delta, minus two delta, my or delta one, delta two, delta three, delta four, delta five, right? So delta one, delta two, up to delta five. Remember, this is in y. Corresponding to delta one, delta two, delta three, delta four, delta five. And uh, these probabilities are uh, equal so that it comes out to be uniform. And then you, you integrate, but this is not easy to integrate. This will be in terms of an error function, etc. But you can tabulate it. So let me go to the next concept. Young, any questions? So if you have a discrete random variable, You know what we mean by average, right? If you have a bunch of values, if this is the observations, how do you find the average? Anybody? Hmm? What did you say? So the average values, you add all of them and divide by n, right? Dividing by n is the same as one over n multiplied by xi. So your assumption is all this probable, all of them are equally likely. So this is the same as, you can write it something like this, P i x i. So if you have uh, x1, x2, et cetera, xn, with the different probabilities, P1, P2, P3, Pn. Then this is the average value. So we will make this definition. Of course, if all these probabilities are equal to one over and that the ordinary sample average, right? It's average of the sample values. So with this, we will 
define something called the expected value of a random variable. So we write it like this, expected value of x, sometimes we use upper bar, not lower bar, upper bar. Is, if it is discrete, we is just uh, this. If it is continuous, it is going to be x, fx, x, dx. So fx, x, dx plays the value of pi, and this plays the value of xi here. So that, this is also called the mean. Sometimes the notation is mu x. So that's the mean of random variable x. You see, I gave you the intuition, right? The average value, but then this is the weighted average if the weights are different or if the uh, weights are continuous, then that formulates the, this. And this is the mean value. So expected value of x is integral fx x dx. So your problem is to find the mean of all these random variables we studied. So so question is if x is a binomial with parameters n and p, what is its mean? So let's do this. So expected value of x is summation xi multiplied by probability of x equal to x. Remember, for a binomial, xi only goes from 0 through n, and xi's are integers. So I can rewrite this as k multiplied by probability of x equal to k. This you need to go home and practice on the, all the problems that we know. I'll, I'll do a few here. So this is summation k. This is, uh, if it is binomial, it is n choose k, n factorial over k factorial, n minus k factorial, p to the power k, q to the power n minus k. k go, look at here, k goes from 0 through n. But let's be careful. When k is 0, the whole thing gets wiped out. So k goes from 1 through n. That's good enough, right? Look here, I changed to 1. Because k equal to 0, there is no uh, contribution. Now I can cancel this k with this. I get k minus 1 here. But this is a mess. But if I pull an n outside, and I pull a p outside, I get k equal to 1 through n. I pulled an n outside, so this becomes n minus 1 factorial. <coughs> This is k minus 1 factorial. This is n minus k still. p to the power k minus 1 because I pulled a p outside. q to the power n minus k. Let me put k minus 1 to be m. So I'll rewrite it at the next thing. <coughs> Expected value of x is np summation k equal to 1 m is 0. So m goes from 0 through n minus 1. Because m is k minus 1. This is n minus 1. This is m factorial. This is n minus 1 minus m factorial. p to the power m, q to the power n minus 1 minus m. So this now looks like summation. n minus 1 choose m. p to the power m minus 1 q to the power n minus 1 minus m. But this is the expansion of p plus q to the power n minus 1, but that's 1. So the bottom line is the expected value of binomial is np. So of course it makes sense. If you toss a coin, if p equal to 2.5, then the average is expected. Half, 
so i want you to find out so x is geometric i will do another example x is geometric with parameter p so expected value of x is summation k probability of x equal to k k equal to 0 through infinity summation k pq to the power k minus 1 k equal to 0 through infinity. i'm going to give, leave this for you to do it at home you just need to you need to this is where you are going to collapse if you cannot do integration, summation, etc., then it's, it is going to get difficult. So you can pull out P outside. So expected value of X is uh, P goes outside K Q to the power K minus one. Anybody knows how to do this? Uh, let me ask you this. What is the probability of, uh, what is the summation of one plus Q plus Q squared, etc., all the way to infinity? What is the value of this series? One by? All right, so if you know this, uh, how, if you take the derivative on both the sides, you'll, you can plug it in here. Because if you take the derivative on both the sides here, you get kq to the power k minus one. Here the answer is one minus q, the whole squared, multiplied by minus one, minus one, so that's this. So that's the answer. So if the answer will be one minus Q is P. So what's the answer? Did, did I make any mistake? What was the mistake? Maybe no mistake like that. What? Did I do this correctly? Minus uh, derivative of one minus Q is one over. Yeah, so one over P, right? Yes? I thought it was P over Q. It depends on uh, how the way the geometric is defined. All right, so expected value of X is integral X, FX, X, DX. Let's say Y is GX. So the question is, what is the expected value of Y? So you can say, we can write it like this, expected value of GX. So, but y is gx, so this is y multiplied by fy by dy. So if you use this formula, the problem is you have to find the density function of y. But we know we can rewrite the density function of y in terms of x. We just learned it before, right? So that's going to be summation uh, dxi by dyi dy multiplied by fx xi multiplied by dy. So the dy dy cancels. These summations and the index, these summations are over multiple roots. This integration originally was on y. So now you are translating it into dxs. So this integration together with all the roots will give you an integration over x. This was before y. And so the formula becomes uh, y, but y is gx. So this is gx multiplied by fxx dx. This is an important formula. The reason is you don't need the density function of y. So look at the top and bottom. The top is the expected value of x. The bottom is the expected value of gx. But this opens up any gx. So remember this formula. So we can write expected value of x squared is integral x squared fx x dx. These are, these are called the central moments, expected value of x and x and fx x and dx. I mean, these are non-central. These are called uh, central moments. So for Gaussian people have computed all this. And I have videos on YouTube computing this for Gaussian. So I'm not going to sit here and rewrite. You just type it in. And uh, you should be able to compute what's the expected value of x squared, x cubed, x4 for Gaussian. And you, you may need it in certain problems and so on. So these are called the central moments. These are, uh, non this is second moment, of course. So you should be able to uh, connect these two. If you call this to be mu n and this to be lambda n, you should be able to go home and connect these two 
for any random variable. You could just expand the binomial expansion, etc. Right. So the second moment is first moment is mean, right? Remember, first moment is mean when you have power one. This is mean, mean of x. So this is very physical. You know what is mean, average value. This is not that physical, but the problem is we may need more. If you if you are characterizing, see, I have two random variables here: f x one and f x two. Uh, let's say the mean of both are the same. It looks like, but one is fat, one is uh, very thin. So it's pretty clear you need one more. So expected value of x1 is mu. Expected value of the second random variable x2 is also mu. So if you are using a parameter, you need at least one more parameter to. This is called the spread of the random variable. It looks like this probability here. Look at this probability. Uh, I mean, if you take a narrow region, this probably most of the probabilities are concentrated here, where here it is more widespread. So the random variable can take values all over here, where here everything is all the realizations must be around the mean. So we need a measure for the spread, and usually it's like the mean squared error, x minus mean. This is the error. Error. Square the error because plus error, minus error shouldn't matter, and take the expected value. So this is like the mean squared average, right? I mean, mean is average, mean square error. In statistics or in probability, this is called, this is given a symbol sigma x squared, and it is called the variance. But you can see this is a this is if a random variable is here, x minus mu is this deviation from the mean. So this is a, a sigma x squared is a measure about deviation of x uh, from its mean. Measure of deviation of x uh, from, I'll, I'll draw it another graph. Any questions? Yeah. Perfect. Uh, what if the PDF is not a bell-shaped curve? Still, the definition holds true. What was it? Complete. Say it again. Suppose if the PDF is not a bell-shaped curve, then okay, still. Let's look at this. See, both the, uh, these are two different PDF. You have two random variables, but their mean happens to be the same. And in one case, you can, let's say one case, it is, it's not, so nothing is bell shaped here. In one case, you can see that if you take this region, most of the probability is here. Or let me redraw it like this. It's not bell shaped. You can talk, take any shape. Whereas the other one, let's say it's like this. It's just all over. Area under both are the same, but they have the same mean value. Where here things are concentrated around here. In other words, just to go to another extreme, let's say you have a density function. And let's say this value is mean. And you have another density function like this. Mean also is mu. 
This is random variable x2. This is random variable x1. So you can clearly see that most of the action is around here. Whereas this random variable things could appear everywhere. So this has got a larger error when the, from the mean. So mean doesn't have much meaning in the second case because the random variable could be all over. So we need a measure for that uh, a deviation. So this is an observation. So x minus mu is this. Whereas here x minus mu is here. X is here, so x minus mu is small, whereas here x minus mu is large. But x minus mu could be positive or negative. So we'll say to get a measure, let's square it so the error doesn't matter sign. Then let's take the expected value. So this is physical. Or you can do it, it's a square root. Statisticians call this square, this is called sigma squared. So sigma is the square root of expected value of x minus mu x, the whole square. Statisticians call this the standard deviation. Can you move the paper up a bit? We cannot see it. Yeah, when I go the paper down, you tell me. So this is called the standard deviation. This is called the variance. So I hope you get the idea. It is because you want to get a measure for the... Uh, so if one is like the mean squared error, both of them. One is the square root of the mean squared error. Root mean square error. Standard deviation is like the root mean square error. Root mean square error. All the four terms are there, right? So root mean square error. RMSC. Whereas this is just the square error, mean, mean square error. So your problem is to find out mean and variance for these random variables. So let's do the uh, few examples. Then, uh, then of course, these are also, you are, this is also, uh, how do you find this? These are called the absolute moments. So here is your homework. You don't have to do anything. All you have to do is go home and uh, just watch my video. Then close the video and rewrite the result. See whether you can do it. Professor, also I have a question. How, what is, how, can, what is we, it? how can we physically interpret moments? I mean, what, what, what are you... moments what? from a physical point, physical understanding point? Can you interpret the second moment? Hello? Yeah. Can you interpret the second moment? That's what I went all this trouble. Second moment. Does yes, this make sense to you, the variance and standard deviation? Yes or no? Yes. Yeah, because it's the mean squared error, right? Mm -hmm. So the so question when is... You cube what, it, what? When you cube the uh, expectations, I mean, when you cube some expectation of x raised to 3, what, what does that mean? That's what I'm going to tell you. So suppose a random, two random variables have the same mean, same variance. Mean is the first order average value. Variance is the second order average value. Then you can say, let me compute the third order uh, moment. Remember, these are like moments, right? Third order moment, fourth order moment. They have names by statisticians, the kryptosis and so on. And if they are different, then you can distinguish like that, right? So, uh, your, <coughs> your problem is uh, uh, go home and do this, uh, I, because there's some variation of this could come in an uh, exam. This is very, all this is done. You don't have to do anything. That's a good thing. But you, uh, rather than do it yourself, try to do this. So, x is zero mean Gaussian with some variance sigma squared. My question is, what is this? Uh, nth moment of Gaussian, what is the absolute value of the nth moment of Gaussian? Both are two different problems. 
I don't remember the answer, but uh, but it is there. So let's take that. Uh, let's take uh, uh, variance. Variance is expected value of x minus mu the whole squared. So if I expand it, this is x squared minus two mu x plus mu squared. So this is three terms. Expectation is an integration, so it's a linear operation. So this is expectation of x squared minus two mu multiplied by expectation of x plus mu squared. Expectation of x is mu, so you get also this formula. So you can write it like, remember variance is positive. Variance is positive because look at the first formula. It's x minus mu the whole squared multiplied by density function. Everything is positive here. So variance is positive. So this is the second moment is greater than the first moment square, right? So any of this, usually you use the last, last formula to find out the variance. You find out the first and second moment, then you use this formula. So let me do the variance of uh, something. Or let me, let me continue with the binomial. So if x is binomial with parameters n and p, we found out expected value of x is np. So I want the variance. So I have to find out expected value of x squared. So that is summation k squared probability of x equal to k. So that's k goes from 0 through n. So this is k squared n factorial k factorial n minus k factorial p k q to the power n minus k. k goes from one through n because when k equal to zero, no contributions. So one k cancels. So you get k minus one factorial. Here you get k. And I'm going to replace k minus one by m. So this becomes m equal to, when k is one, m is zero, m equal to zero. When k is n, this is n minus one. We went through this. k is m plus one. So you have m plus one n factorial, here you have uh, m factorial, here you have n minus one minus m factorial, p to the power m plus one, q to the power n minus one minus m. So I am going to, I can pull out p outside. Let me see whether I can simplify this. So if I pull NP outside, this becomes summation M equal to zero through N minus one M. Then I have N factorial, M factorial. Remember there's two terms. So the next term is summation this simply becomes n choose m, n minus one choose m. Remember this is n has been pulled out. So this is n minus one factorial, p to the power m, q to the power. But this is nothing but, this we went through this, this is p plus q to the power m minus one, which is one. So let's concentrate here. Again, I cancel m, this becomes m minus one. So expected value of x squared is NP. You have to do this carefully. The last term is one that we got, this term. Here when I cancel M, this becomes M minus one factorial. So let me put M minus one to be back to K. Uh, before that, uh, this M goes from one through N by one through n minus one because if m, m equal to zero, no contribution. So summation back to k, k is from zero through n minus two because when m is one, k is zero. When m is n minus one, k is n minus two. And this becomes n minus one factorial. This becomes k factorial. 
this becomes n minus 2 minus k p to the power m is look at here m is k plus 1 so p k plus 1 q to the power m is k plus 1 so this is n minus 2 minus k so here i'm going to pull out an n minus q outside n minus 1 outside from here and then 1 p outside so you will say how the hell will you remember all this but i'll go through in a minute so there are other ways to do this so remember n minus 1 has been pulled out so this becomes n minus 2 choose k p to the power k q to the power n minus 2 minus k but this is the expansion of p plus q to the power n minus 2 plus 1 here from the previous term So I'm going to leave you to look at that. So you can see the answer. This is 1. So this whole answer is NP multiplied by N minus 1P plus 1. So let's expand this. So you get expected value of X squared is NP the whole squared minus P plus one, right? So first term NP, NP, so that's NP uh, the whole squared plus NP multiplied by minus P plus one, but this is Q. So you get NP Q plus NP the whole squared. That's the answer. So variance is expected value of X squared minus mu X squared. Mu X is NP. So this is NP Q plus NP the whole squared minus NP the squared. So this becomes NP Q. So this is also a famous result. If X is Gauss, if X is uh, Binomial, then uh, mean is NP, variance is NPQ. So you have some work to do at home to find out the mean and variance of uh, random variables. So my question is the following. So suppose X is Poisson. I'll do this also and then we'll stop. He think? Did you send the exam or not it? No. Uh, wait, I'll tell you. So expected value of X is K multiplied by probability of X equal to K. K goes from zero through infinity. <laughs> Lambda to the power K over K factor. You can start putting your videos on. I am not going to send the exam till everybody's video is on. K goes from zero through infinity. K you can cancel. K minus one factorial. So this becomes uh, summation. E raised to minus lambda goes outside. Lambda to the power K over K minus one factorial. Put K minus one to be M. So this becomes E raised to minus lambda summation. Lambda to the power M plus one over M factorial. Pull out a lambda outside. Then this is uh, lambda m over m factorial. But this is the expansion of e raised to plus lambda. So the whole answer will turn out to be lambda. So lambda is the mean value of a poison. And I'm going to ask you to go home and do that. Expected value of x squared is lambda plus lambda squared. So that variance of x is also lambda for when x is poison. This you need to go home and show this. So a lot of these are very standard results. This sort of should be in your, uh, especially if you are going to continue with this, it shouldn't be. So the go whole question is, maybe we'll do this next time. If x is normal with the two parameters a and b, what is its mean? What is its variance? So why don't you try, and what are its non-central moments, higher order moments, and so on.
So uh, already a lot of problems for you to do. So you just have to work on it quickly and you need to spend about 10, 15, 10 hours at least at home on this talk course before you show up next week. So as I said, uh, so I'm going to give you the answer. The answer is A is the mean, sigma squared is B. Whatever is uh, comes up here is the variance. So how do you prove this, etc.? Now, as I said, if X is normal with zero, so this parameter is the mean, zero mean, then what is the expected value of X to the power n? Is this two to the power n? I don't remember exactly, but something like this would come. You need to figure, uh, you need to look at my videos. And uh, this also is interesting. These are all tabulated. This gives you an idea about the complexity of the problem also. So please do these problems at home. Remember, I'm referring to Gaussian. Gaussian, all these are tabulated. And as we move on, uh, more complicated relations would come. So you cannot characterize a random variable. That's a good question. It's a two variables, mean and variance. You may need a third moment, fourth moment, sixth moment, and so on, so on. Wherever we can uh, go ahead. Whose video is not there? You tell me. I want to send you the exam. You just have to get the videos on. 